All right, good morning or good evening or good afternoon whenever you're watching this. I'm Mr. Kray. And I'm Mrs. Banneker. And we're going to talk to you today about making sure your paper doesn't look super ugly. Yeah. And using the MLA to make sure that everything is in proper place. Uh, look at this beautiful, is beautiful nice. essay it's right nice here. Paper. See that everything is uniform. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking A already. It's a clean. Already. Right? Everything's in the way it should be. If you go down to the bottom, they even have a work cited on its own page, and it's looking pretty good. So those margins are kind of narrow, though, but we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll double check those. Um, here's more of what I'm used to getting. I don't know about you, Mrs. Banneker, um, but we need to fix this bad boy up a little bit. Mm. All right. So let's start with the easiest stuff and go to the MLA headline or the heading. So, uh, Ms. Banneker, what do you want to fix first? Well, students started out with the right thing first, the, um, the student's name. You, I always tell my students to go in order of importance. Um, they are the writers, so they are the most important. And well, I, wait, I, what? I, well, what, what? I think if it was the most important, my name would be on the Oh, side. very funny. Okay, second most important. I put the important. power in my students' hands. That's I don't know about you, Mr. Kramer. Seems foolish, but okay. So, and since I have taught them everything they know, <laughs> I am second most important, and therefore, I tell them the teacher's name goes second. Okay, so we'll move that. And then the class that they're writing the paper for. And if they want to put the black, I tell them they can put it on that line if they so choose. How do you like, does it matter to you if they do second hour or do you require a dash or anything nah. like that? Yeah. For I me, don't even require them to put the black because yeah. I can sort that. But. I don't, yeah, I don't think that matters too much either. And then that date. The date looks kind of ugly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let's go ahead and fix it. So every time you're using MLA, you need to go from most specific to most general, especially with the date. So what you need to put first is if it's the 23rd of February, 23 has to go first. And by moving it here, we can make sure that we don't need to use a comma on this line. Sometimes I still see a comma there but I know that this word is not a number, mm -hmm. so the comma is not necessary. So it just ends up being the easiest and shortest way to write the date. We also spell out the month of February because we're not lazy. Yes. <laughs> um, something else that I notice, I always get students that single space their heading, and I kind of understand right. why they do it. You mm -hmm. want to conserve space, conserve paper, but MLA doesn't really care about that. Nope. They want everything to be uniform, so your double spacing starts from the very beginning of the essay. So everything is going to eventually be double spaced, including that heading. Okay. So we'll show you two different ways to double space, and we're actually going to have to double space this whole thing. But for right now, we'll just look at the headline, or for the heading. Uh, the way I always do it is I hit Control 2, and then everything is nicely spaced. But, uh, Ms. Banker, what's the other way in case you don't remember Control 2? How well, do you do it in Microsoft Word? I don't know those fancy little codes. <laughs> So I go up here to the toolbar and click on the paragraph arrow, and it takes you to um, this screen where you can make a lot of formatting changes. And you just go down here to line spacing and click on double and hit OK. OK. And that kind of leads us into the next one where there is way too much space here. And I know sometimes when you guys are trying to like make it to the end of the page and make sure that it, you've gone over page three onto page four, Sometimes you'll go here and, you know, your first page kind of looks like this. But Mr. Claire, how else am I going to add length to my paper? Right. Um, thoughts you are usually helpful. But in case you don't have any of those, um, f find something else that you can use to extend it. But don't do that because in MLA, everything needs to be double spaced. So there should only be one space in between everything. Also, just think about the impression that you're giving off if you have a lot of white space on the first page of your paper. That's the first thing that your teacher sees. And if your teacher's seeing white space instead of writing, kind of sets them up for you know what they can expect later. So mm -hmm. show off your cool ideas by taking up most of the space with your words in that <laughs> blank space. Good, yeah, that's a good way to phrase it. Um, so everything needs to be double spaced there. Um, then we'll see that the body of this work isn't double spaced yet either. So let's go ahead and select all of that and hit Control 2. And then, hey, we just went from less than three pages to um, looking like about six pages. So that was pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's one way to add length to your paper, double spacing. Yeah, double space your stuff. 
Um, let's real fast, obviously all of your new paragraphs need to be indented and to indent your paper you can hit tab. Um, if you're using a different um, word processor besides Microsoft Word and tab isn't working, sometimes you can also do five spaces, one, two, three, four, five, it's sometimes considered the least amount you need for an indent. But I think the tab just looks cleaner. Um, so make sure you try and use the tab whenever you possibly can. All right, there's our double space. Um, do you want to talk about header real fast? And yeah, um, some teachers are going to require a header, some are not. Um, MLA format does ask that you include a header on your page. And notice that the header is going to be different from the heading. Um, one of my pet peeves is when students put the heading, this information here, uh, into the yeah. header, mm -hmm. and it appears on every single page. Um, you kind of you don't need to see that on every page. So to get to the header, um, all you have to do is double click, and then you can come up with this um, toolbar at the top. You don't technically need anything on the first page, so you want to click different first page up here. So that's going to be the first page header, which is going to be empty. We don't need anything. I'm trying to scroll down here. So let's go down to the second page header. What is this guy's last name here? Uh, Cumberpatch. Cumberpatch. Mr. Mr. Kerr, would you mind typing that in for me? So we're going to align it to. to the right and type in his last name. Okay. And the other thing that we need is the page number. So I'm going to go back to the footer or header, header and I'm going to go over here to page number. We want it at the top of the page. you got to give it some time to think. Yeah, this is hard work. Um, and so you're going to get a lot of pictures about what it's going to look like, and I'm pointing, and you guys can't see me. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to go plane number three over here. Oh no! It oh went no! Away. Type patch. again. Type yep. again. All right. And save. space between the two, and then all you got to do is just click off of that header, and oh look, the magic of the header and insert page number. Look, it's page three. Beautiful. So don't type in the number two in the header because then every page will be Cumberpatch page two. Also, if your teacher requires this, make sure that it goes in the actual header and not at the very top of the page because if something happens, like you upload it to turnitin.com and it, the formatting gets weird, then you might have your last name and a page number in the middle of a page instead of at the top. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're looking good here. Um, I think most of our stuff is already done. We have the heading, we have a title that makes sense. Um, sometimes we'll see the title is like bolded and underlined and like the craziest font that you could find. Um, don't do it. Just keep it nice and simple. It needs to be the same font size as everything else. Don't worry, I will find the title <laughs> just because it's, it, usually because it's centered, I'll find it pretty easily. And I know it comes right after your heading. So please make sure that your title is something descriptive enough that only can describe your paper. If it's just something like uh, Romeo and Juliet essay, then that's a little too generic. So make sure your title is something that's a little bit more helpful. Uh, let's see if we can kind of scroll down here and see if there's anything else that's a little bit and needs to be fixed up. Just for general formatting, we're not going to talk about the actual essay itself. Um, okay. That works, cited page. Woo! It's a little rough. A yeah. A little rough. Okay. Um, first off, let's just make sure the works cited gets its own page. It's important enough to merit an extra piece of paper, I would think. Yeah. Um, Let's see, what else are you thinking, Mrs. Banker? There's a lot to tackle here. Yeah, well, first of all, everything needs to be double spaced. So, why don't we take care of that? Yeah, that's and an then easy we'll, place to start. Yep, we'll highlight all of our stuff and use that control 2 again. All right, so for each citation, if you go on to a new line, you want to make sure that all of your new lines are indented. So, not the first line in a citation, but every line after the first. <clears throat> and this just adds clarity so that a reader can easily see. Um, how many sources you've cited and where all of those sources begin so that it's not confusing. They don't all run together. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Kerr, can you show them your fancy trick? What is your fancy little Sure. Code? So, there's always a tip or a trick to doing this without having to go into the Microsoft Word ribbon or that tab up there. So, what I do is this word print needs to be indented, but you know if you just hit tab, everything moves over. So, what you have to do is hit control tab. 
Ooh. And then once you do that, you can just kind of go through all those lines and hit Control Tab, and then everything will scooch over for you. Mr. Kerr, I think that changed my life. It's pretty awesome. I actually learned that from a student four years nice. ago. So uh, thank you for that tip. Sometimes we learn things from students. Um, here's how I do it, Sometimes. because again, I'm not fancy. Um, I'm going to highlight everything. Oop, and I see one already has that hanging indent. And I'm going to go back up to our little paragraph section. Um, here, this middle section is for all uh, your indentation stuff. You usually don't really have to worry about it. But this is a special um, way to indent. So you're going to click on hanging. That's what this kind of indentation is called. And hit OK. And so now, except for here, <laughs> every line after the first, I'm going to get rid of that extra space there, yeah. um, is already indented. And then we can just use Mr. Prayer's fancy control, control tab. tab. See how nice that looks? And now you can clearly see where all of the new sources start. Mm -hmm. I see another issue, Mr. Prayer. Yeah, I think one thing we want to do is, first off, this isn't centered, so let's move this over and center the title. It needs to be works cited, unless you're only citing one work, then work cited would be proper. And works cited is C-I-T-E-D, it's not works cited, it's not works cited. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you did cite them at some point, as in you saw them, mm -hmm. but works cited you needs to be You went to a site to yeah, get right. them sometimes. <laughs> you went, yeah, usually. Um, there are a few other errors in here. One that I'll just tackle really fast, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can look at all of them at the same time. Um, we are not in alphabetical order here. No. So we can see, the reason we do the hanging indent is so we can see the first word very clearly and it stands out a little bit better because usually this is the word that's going to appear in your parentheses when you're citing works. But it makes it harder when they're not alphabetical. So let's see here, this Q1 probably needs to be moved down to the bottom. And then let's see here, C, D... Uh, uh, what happens when you have two that start exactly the same. So we have death penalty, death penalty. Which one comes first, Mr. Prayer? <laughs> I would put the one with the shorter title before the one with more information. I would say less information would qualify that is, you. That is correct. Oh, thank you. Good. I thought that was a little no, tough. No, it was I wasn't, a quiz. I wasn't quite quiz. sure I myself. It. No, Good. I for real knew the answer. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. We have C, D, D, M, Q. I think we're looking good here. Yeah. If I remember my alphabets correctly. Um, anything else you want to tackle here? Is there anything that I'm missing, Mr. Uh, I think it look, yeah, looks I think, good just right off the bat. Right? I think it looks good. I like it when we capitalize our months. Oh, That's I usually that helpful. One. Yeah, and um, some of the other stuff is, this was done probably with EasyBib or some auto citation tool because you can see that this finest quotes and, and finest and quotes, a, this kind of looks, it looks like whoever this was didn't polish this up quite right. So I would just kind of go back and make sure uh, we take out the stuff that isn't quite necessary. Yeah. Technology doesn't always get it right, unfortunately. No, we have to double check. And then I would say MLA 7 require, doesn't require that, oh, oh, we forgot. And then here, I think this isn't, this website isn't, uh, that's why it wasn't see, working. Confusing. There we go, yeah. So instead of actually citing this one, the student just put a link to the website. Please make sure you go to a website like um, easybib.com and then get this taken care of. And you can put it in here and then take care of it. But that's a whole other video and yeah. we don't want to waste your time. So let's assume that we fixed that. Yeah. Let's just assume that we didn't use that source. Yeah, maybe we didn't. But I see that all the time. A works cited page is not a list of the, the URLs that you visited. Mm -hmm. There's a proper format. Yeah, these people did a lot of work to create this information, and so you want to give them the credit that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's just make sure everything ends with a period. Yep, 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 and yep. All right, I think we're good. Then yeah. now what we've done is we've taken this uh, paper that needed a little help with formatting and made sure it looked pretty. Yeah, good first impression. Yep. Makes a teacher happy when we're getting ready to grade. Definitely, definitely. Alright, so hopefully that was helpful and good luck.